morning. Morning. What are you expecting out of Colin in this game? Can you have any? Can you have any baseline of where he really is once he gets on the field? You know, we expect we need to move the football offensively, so and that's why we made the decision to do what we were doing. So hopefully we can get a little bit more consistency uh, on the offensive side of the ball, and that's what I think we need. I think at times, you know, we've looked really good on offense and things are humming and things are clicking, but it, it's it's uh, we haven't been consistent enough in our drives and really sustaining drives to stay on the field. You know, critical things in third down, I think, of. Um, have been the things that we've really tried to emphasize and work on um, as, as, as we get moving forward here. So that's, that's what we're hoping for, and that's, what, that's, that's why we made the move. Have you seen a difference and a change and improvement with his elevated number of reps? No, I mean, we've had two days of training, so I don't think you got a whole sample size of, I think we had 24 reps on Tuesday, and then it goes up to about 40 or 50 on yesterday. So I couldn't say there's a marked difference you know, in terms of what we have. I mean, we literally, it's only been two days, so. You mentioned 2013 Kaepernick's. I know mostly it's been the physical stuff, what he, his weight was, but is this a similar Colin Kaepernick you've seen on the practice field in 2013? Do you remember? I, I wasn't here. I, I just know what he was like physically, and that's the only, I know that for some reason that seems to be everybody kind of caught on to that. Whether it was 2013 or 2014, it was just pre-injury Colin Kaepernick that everybody knew that was somewhere between 215 and 290 pounds. I don't know exactly what he weighed because I wasn't here. So he just, what part of that? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just, it, it, and, and again, it was more towards when people want to know what's wrong with Colin Kaepernick. It was, he's a guy coming off of three, three injuries, and he's worked, as I said, extremely hard at putting himself back into shape, getting himself ready to play football. He was cleared medically in August, but that doesn't mean – you're a full go ready to play and are going to pick up right where you left off. You know, it's, it's, it's been a process and he's worked extremely hard at it. So we're, we're hoping that when we get him on the field on Sunday, that that's going to show dividends for us. Chip, I, I want to just give you a chance to clarify a comment you made Tuesday, which perhaps was unfairly interpreted, but you said in making the quarterback change, it's really the only one of the only moves you can make based on your depth. Some people, you know, took that as maybe a thinly veiled shot at Trent Falky and the roster you know, the offensive talent you, you have. That's a big deep here, huh? <laughs> if you look at every position we have on offense, we rotate. So all three running backs play. Every, if five receivers are up, they play. All three tight ends play. We're rotating our offensive line. The only position you don't rotate on the offensive side of the ball is quarterback. So when I said that's the only maneuver you could make, it's not like, well, geez, Carlos isn't playing well. Well, Sean Drone plays. Mike, Mike Davis plays. Blake Bell plays. Garrett Selleck plays. Vance McDonald plays. We rotate six offensive linemen. The only position that had not been rotated on the offensive side of the ball was the quarterback spot. So that's what I said. What are you going to do? The only position we hadn't made a move at was quarterback. So that's all I meant by that. So Obviously, what you're saying is not an, an indictment of, of the offensive talent. Right? No, not at all. You guys are digging deep today. So. Hey, is is playing definitely going to be the backup on Sunday? Yeah. Yes. Some, some uh, coaches might have waited all week to announce it. You know, kept the opponent guessing, kept everyone guessing until Sunday. Why, why announce it on, on Tuesday? Well, I think we live in a society, number one, that there are no secrets. So if Colin took all the reps with the ones on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, somebody's mole would have told him who was taking all the reps. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I don't really care. I, I mean, we have two similar quarterbacks. Our offense doesn't change. You know, I don't think when you're going to outsmart people in the National Football League where all of a sudden, if the second quarterback's playing, that Rex is going to tear up his game plan and said, we're screwed. We have no idea how to defend him. You know, you're going to – like people way overanalyze the whole thing. If uh, you ask me a question, I'm going to tell you an answer. You tell me who our quarterback is, I'm going to tell you who our quarterback is. Our quarterback m maneuver was, was made on Tuesday, then our quarterback will be announced on Tuesday. So I don't, I don't buy that whole, you know, stick the banana in the tailpipe and – try to tell them the car is broken, you know what I mean? It's just, it is what it is. We moved, made the maneuver on Tuesday, I'll announce it on Tuesday. So and who's your starting right guard? That I don't know yet. We're still, it's a work in progress. You know, I think you, Jason, I mean, um, Josh has played more. He, I think he played about 20 snaps on uh, Thursday. He'll continue to play more, and we'll just kind of see how that goes um, based on how we are in training. But you'll see, you, hopefully you'll see both of those guys depending on how we go uh, from a training standpoint. So. Is this one of the situations that a couple of weeks ago, I think, Jim and I will talk about the quarterback situation. There will be a competition to practice to see yeah. who wins it. It's, it's similar, yeah. 
but I would imagine we still may play all those guys in the offensive line too. So. Denver's got five games. I know it might not have been strictly. He's going to get five games, but are you looking at Kaepernick getting at least five? Is this I have no pitch count, whatever it is on it. Just we, we have to make decisions on what's best for us to do. So I didn't go into it saying Blaine had, we had a plan, let's give him five games and see where we are after five and then make a decision. It's just we evaluate everything on a, on a day-to-day basis, honestly, in terms of where we're going to be and what's the best for us to move forward and to try to win on a weekly basis. So um, that's kind of where it is. But there's not a, a count of games throws, whatever, for, for anybody right now. So. How's Cap's timing in terms of uh, playing with the ones? Jeremy Curley has been targeted in pretty much security blanket for Blaine Gabbert. Um, him alongside Torrey Smith, how, how are they looking um, when they roll with Cap? Well, again, it's been two days of training with them, but I, they've, they've been consistent since we've been, out, we've been out there. They get a lot of work in all our individual drills, so you, know, you get a chance to see that. We do a lot of, you know, whether it be three on two or four on three against our defense where we're just rolling the receivers and rolling the quarterbacks. There's not, hey, this guy has to be with that guy, that guy has to be with this guy. So um, and I, I don't see that being an issue, saying he hasn't been throwing to those guys because he has been throwing to them in training sessions. So. Along the same lines, though, with, with Curley in particular, and, and it seems so much of that position is predicated on body language and hot routes and things like that. How, how is how important to you is chemistry with this, between the slot receiver and the, and the quarterback? Well, I think all of it's important. I mean, they, you, you can't say chemistry is not important, but I don't know. I don't know what the word chemistry is. It's is is are the receiver and the quarterback on the same page, you know? And then do they know when the receiver is going to break and make his decision in terms of where he's going? And you know, we do run. We don't run all option routes, but we do have a fair amount of option routes in there where you you got to get a feel in terms of where they are. But that's what practice is for and training is for to to kind of to get that stuff ironed out. So. Um, We'll see how that goes. Colin said a couple of times that what you guys do is similar to what he did in, in college. Did you ever look at um, the University of Nevada when you were, you know, going across country and meeting different coaches? I never met with the University of Nevada, but I mean, I know Coach Alton. What a great career he had there, and the impact that he had on football in terms of what he did. But I didn't specifically go to Nevada and study Coach Alton. You see the similarity. Not in the passing game, no, but I think there's some things we do in the run game, yes. In that last preseason game, was Kaepernick running the full offense there? What, what was that like? Pretty much. I mean, we were limited a little bit. Like, Curl, Curly just got here, so I think um, Jeremy played in that game, but I only think he had, like, three or four plays in that if we got him in, you know, I think he ended up having three catches in that game. Um, you know, you're a little scaled back just based upon what you have playing around him. Um, so... You know, I wouldn't say we had our full offense in for that game, but you know, there's a, a, a good chunk of what we're doing was in in that game. Giving up a, a hundred yards or more to a running back four straight games, and here comes LaShawn McCoy. Mm-hmm. Um, what are the issues in that? Is it mostly tackling? Is it gaps? Is it? It's a combination of both. It's never just one thing, but I think first and foremost, the fundamentals of tackling have to be, especially with such an elusive back like LaShawn, you better make sure. Um, not only are you doing a good job in your fundamental technique of tackling, but you're also getting as many guys as you can to the football because you have to kind of corral him. Uh, you know, he can make some, he can make one guy miss in the open field. That's that's his forte. You know, he's he's got extreme quickness and in, in, in the ability to to, to shake guys in in one on one situations. So, part of playing against a really good running back is the ability to gang tackle him and, and not give him outs and make sure that. You know, you've created a wall, so to speak, in, in, up front, so there's not a, a place where he can insert if it's an inside running play. And if it bounces to the sideline, do we have contain? Have we set edges on him? And if we set edges, are the rest of the guys running to the ball and playing with great pursuit so that you can kind of corral him? So, you know, to play against someone like LaShawn, it's going to take all 11 guys on defense contributing to him. And the biggest thing for us is try to stay out of the one on one tackle situations and let's get into gang tackle situations where we're getting three, four, and five guys to the football. Navarro had surgery. Has he been around the team? No, he's not. I think he just had surgery two days ago, maybe. I think I'm not. It's what's today? What are we on Thursday? I think it was either either Monday or Tuesday. So one, two to three days ago. So I don't. I'm not sure if he's back yet. I'm going. I'm going back a couple of weeks here, but Kaepernick was very very complimentary of you when you called what he was fighting against heinous. Um, I'm just wondering what that comment meant to you and. And uh, having him uh, say that, what what your reaction was? Well, I mean, I think the comment is very self-explanatory. I mean, there's people that are dying senselessly, both police officers and citizens of this country. And if you don't 
see that. You know, I think you're either blind or ignorant. I mean, there's a huge issue going on in this country, and um, I don't think anybody can say that they think it's okay. You know, I don't think you're going to get that from anybody, and that's just what I meant, that I think it's, there's a lot of senseless things that are going on in this nation that need to be addressed. So I support his take on that. You said that you, were, you just demonstrated strength by saying that, reacting like that. Have you had a conversation about that with him, just the support you've had for him? I've had conversations with Cap. You know, I, I, I know he's got a lot going on on his plate, and I, I think part of that is making sure he understands that, you know, people do support him in terms of where he is and, and, and what he's what he stands for and what the things are. I think sometimes he gets very um, – he's very misunderstood, and I think people's reaction towards what he's trying to do is very misunderstood. But, you know, I think Colin has a clear heart and a, and a clear vision of what he's trying to get accomplished, So, and I support that. When it comes to stopping the run, um, stopping the run in nickel seems harder because you have more defensive backs on the field, you're more spread out. Uh, how do you balance schematically matching up that way versus trying not to get gashed in the running game? In, in well, I, I don't think you can say stopping the run in nickel is different than stopping the run in base. It's because what are they got out there? So really what you're trying to do is match their personnel. If if they have bigger tight ends in there and you have smaller DBs in there, then that's a mismatch. That's why you don't want to be in nickel when they have bigger guys in there. But if if they have 10 personnel, so to speak, when it's receivers out there and you have DBs out there, then it's it's the same. You know, it's you know, you, you got to get you got to be able to no matter who you are to defeat the block. You know, you got to get off of the block and get to the football. So um, part of what people try to do is match what you have in. So if you got bigger bodies in, then we'll have bigger bodies in. If you have smaller bodies in, then we'll have smaller bodies in. The reason is twofold is that. Number one, we feel like we can match up in the run game and we have smaller bodies because our guys should be able to, to get off those blocks because they're getting blocked by similar sized guys. But number two, if you have big bodies in and they have a small lineup in, then you can't cover them. You know, so you get into some mismatches when you're 6'4", 6'5", 270-pound outside linebacker is in space versus a Jeremy Curley or a Cole Beasley. That's a, that's a mismatch that, you know, that chess game that goes on within the game is, hey, they left base in the game well, maybe we should be throwing it, not trying to run against base. If they have nickel in the game, you know, and, and, and uh, we have big guys in the game, then maybe we should be running it. But usually people are just trying to match. So you don't kind of get caught with we have a smaller lineup in. It's no different than basketball. You got a small lineup in and they went big. You know, well, you're probably going to get the ball pounded into the post on you. You know what I mean? If, all right, we have a small lineup in and they're big, we're going to stand outside three and start taking threes because we don't feel they can cover us. So that's kind of the chess match that goes on within the game. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.